In this video, we are going to consider an introduction to virtual private networks, that's VPNs. We are going to see the uses of VPNs. We will see the different technologies under VPNs. We will look at different deployment scenarios. And finally, we will consider the features of VPNs. So we are now ready to take on virtual private networks, which is VPNs for short. So what is a VPN? A VPN is just a means to enable private communication. So enable the private communication, say communication between two branches or between a branch and a headquarters. Now you enable that private communication over a public infrastructure. Now a public infrastructure could be something like the internet. That's a good example of a public infrastructure. So imagine you have the internet and you have your HQ here and you have a branch here. Now, of course, both of them will be connected to the internet because your users on your LAN would need to be able to connect to the internet. And also here in the HQ, you are also going to have a LAN filled with users. Now, this could be a public network. It could be a shared network. But when this HQ wants to communicate with the branch or vice versa, because this the information that they're going to communicate is something that is supposed to be private, then you don't just want to send it over the internet unencrypted. So a VPN allows you to build some sort of tunnel. That's like in this example between the HQ and the branch that allows private communication. So even though it's going over a public infrastructure, this information is going to be private. Basically, you are trying to protect it from third parties. You don't want any third party to be able to listen in on this conversation. Now, why do you do that? Why do you have to go through a public infrastructure? Because sometimes it may not be cost effective to connect this HQ and the branch. So you may not be able to connect this HQ and the branch, either maybe through a dedicated line. That may be too expensive. Even a least circuit could also be expensive. So you're just going to use public infrastructure. Everybody usually needs access to the internet. So you already have that public infrastructure and then you are using it. or so it's like the underlying mechanism by which you, you can communicate. So cost is one of the reasons why we use VPN. Another thing is flexibility. Remember in this instance, we used a branch and a HQ. Now what if it's a HQ and say a user? So we call this, you know, people who work from home or things like that. So like a telecommuter. Now this telecommuter can be anywhere at any time. And you can't have like a dedicated link connecting to that user's PC. So the user has to go around like different parts of the country and is not stable. And then you need a VPN for that kind of thing. So it allows for flexibility and cost. So let's talk about VPN technologies. And the technologies that we're going to be considering are from a cryptographic point of view. So the first one that we see is secure VPN. Secure VPNs are also known as cryptographic VPNs. And basically what they do is they secure traffic using encryption. Like we saw in the previous video, we've seen different encryption mechanisms. So they secure traffic using encryption through a tunnel. And the examples that we have under this include IPsec. We also have SSL. Now these are the two focuses of the CNA security exam. So we're going to be focusing on IPsec and SSL. Now another technology that we can have is known as the trusted VPN. Now trusted VPN just relies on the fact that you are not using a shared infrastructure. Basically, what it means is that maybe you have like a least circuit and you rely on the fact that your ISP, so you rely on the fact that your ISP is not sharing that connection with anybody. It's just like saying you are the only one on that link. So you don't have to add any, put any extra protection since you are the only one on that link. Example of this type of VPN include MPLS. Um, we also have BGP VPN. Now the third VPN technology that we can have is hybrid. So hybrid is just like a mixture of both of them, secure VPN and trusted. Sometimes it's just known as tunnel in a tunnel. 
there are three general ways by which VPNs can be deployed. And the first one that we're going to see is known as remote access. Remote access VPN just allows, like we mentioned before, it allows like telecommuters or it allows single users to connect to a remote destination network. So imagine, like we said before, that this is your HQ connected somehow to the internet. This is the internet. And then you have some user working remotely. Now remote access is going to let this user establish a connection securely to the HQ just to access the company's resources. And so remote access VPN is basically meant for single users. The second type of deployment that we can have is site to site. Site to site also known as intranet basically. Now this is the one that we saw in the beginning where we said a branch wanting to connect to the HQ. So this is your HQ and you have a branch. This is the internet that they are both connected to. Now take note that because they are connected to this internet does not mean they have to be connected through the same ISP. They just mean that they have a connection to the internet somehow. So this is the branch. So site to site allows you to connect different offices of the organization to each other. And like I said before, it is usually done over a shared infrastructure like the internet. The third one that we can have is extranet. So why the intranet allows offices of the same organization to connect to each other securely? Extranet allows two different organizations to connect. So what I mean by two different organizations is if you have company A and you have company B. Now they are not the same organization, but somehow maybe they have some partnership agreement. For example, if you want to book your flights, you have options of booking hotel with your flight. You have options of booking a car service. Now, if you are booking your flight on, say, British Airways, British Airways is not the one that is going to show you the options of the hotel and it's not the one that is running the car services, but they are going to be connected securely. And this is an example of an extranet. They are connected because they have some form of partnership. This brings us to the main features of VPNs. Now we've already seen these things in cryptography and that's why we talked about cryptography first. So the first one is confidentiality. Remember what confidentiality is? Confidentiality is just ensuring privacy and VPNs allow you to ensure privacy because even though you are going over a shared infrastructure, your communication should be secure. VPN allows you to provide secure communication. The second one is integrity. And you know what integrity talks about. It just means that information is not altered while in transit or while in storage. The third one is authentication. So it means that you can know who you are talking to. You can verify the identity of the person that you are talking to. So the final one is anti-replay. Anti-replay just prevents an attacker from capturing legitimate traffic and playing it back, making it seem like that traffic is legitimate, thereby fooling the device into thinking that that traffic is maybe already authenticated and then that attacker can build a VPN with that device. So these are the four main features of VPN. Of course, there are other features like maybe access control and maybe traffic flow confidentiality, but these are the four main features of VPN. This brings us to the end of this video where we have seen an introduction to virtual private networks we have considered the uses, technologies, deployment scenarios, and then the different features of VPNs like confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. I hope you have found this video insightful and I'd like to thank you for watching.